the sands of time have turned, you've already seen the story of a queendom rebuilt, and now a mad queen sits on the throne. Queen Snow's rise to power has been smooth, but members of the Fey Court are wary of her moods. Those raised with her know a darker, unstable side exists beneath the benevolent exterior of the new monarch. But for now, the fairies who answer to her are sated with the direction of the queendom. It only took some time before a new seat of power was established across the river that cuts right through the heart of Dragon Valley. Verdington Palace, a purple fairy palace mingled with pink and green accents and enchanted spring flowers tucked in every corner. Many of the fairies appreciate the change, finding it lighter and softer than the vivid darkness of their childhood castle. The Queen has granted Lady Morida a seat at her right hand, with Lady Azalea, her niece, at the left. Lady Selene knows the days of honoring the heroes are gone. Even as the eldest fairy in court, she sits below the throne. With her is Queen Snow's newest appointment, Lady Saffron Fuentier, the Fay Court's philosopher. All that's left to do now is settle into their palace home and hope this rain goes smoother than the last. Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome to the second generation of our Sims 3 Fairy Amazon Royal Saga with the Verdington Fae Court. Before we begin, I want to say a very special welcome to our channel members. Thank you so, so much for your support. I appreciate it immensely. And also a huge thank you to everyone who's been waiting super patiently for this season to come out while I have been working on it behind the scenes for the past month after we finished our Generation 1, which I will link in the description below. So if you guys are interested, you can check that out, especially because all of the fairies that you see here have backstories because... I think everyone except one of them were born in the previous generation, so you can get all of that content if you want. Um, it'll make your experience in this season a lot deeper, I think. So okay, let's dive into a quick introduction of our fairies. We'll start off with the lovely fairy in the middle, and oh my goodness, what are you doing? Sit down. Sit down. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Unruly philosopher, sit down. There we go. It's okay. She's new. She's new blood. She doesn't entirely know the rules of the court just yet. And the phone. How could she? How could she? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Already she's trying to sabotage us. Honey, don't do this. Can you silence the phone? Yes. I think I've silenced everyone else's phone too, so. Haha. -ha. You can't win against me. Okay, diving in to the fairy in the middle, the most important fairy of our court and regime. And actually, before I jump into the intros, to those of you who are new and aren't aware, I should probably explain. So, this series that we have, this Let's Play, is based off the Amazon challenge, where you have a female sim who essentially creates a clan of other females by inviting them in and then the whole purpose is to have baby girls to continue the various roles that you have. Now what I have going on here is a far cry from the original Amazon challenge because I've changed a whole bunch of things and we have our own fairy culture going and different reasons for things that happen and ways of doing things from the the original challenge and my own version of this is written in a Google document, which I'll link in the description as well if you guys want to check that out. But okay, let's get going, shall we? So, Fairy in the Middle, this is Queen Snow Verdington, our fabulous fairy monarch. 
She, as I said, is our ruler, the one who is in charge of all these fairies. She rules the lands of the Queendom, which is based in Dragon Valley. So in case I didn't clarify beforehand, we are playing in Dragon Valley. Um, so her traits, she is socially awkward, unstable, dislikes children, green thumb, and friendly. So already you can see she's got quite the array of things. And the the fairies in her court, they are a little bit wary of her being a mad queen. Not everybody says it, but everybody thinks it because they know she's unstable. She has been since a very young age. And the way I like to play, if Sims have a dislikes children trait, I don't get them to try for a baby. So unfortunately, unless she somehow rolls out of that, we not we have we have already a really weird situation going on where we might not have an heir from our current queen. And since she has no sisters, she's actually the last Verdington female. If she doesn't have any children, then we might have a brand new um, dynasty taking over at the end. Because I mean, who's gonna who's gonna carry on the bloodline? Morida, can you please off your? I, I hope it's silenced. I think it is, but even so, it is a bit frustrating when they have all these calls at the randomest times. But these fairies know a lot of Sims, so they're probably going to get a ton of calls, like, all the time. Another thing, with the unstable trait, I try and get my Sims cured every time they have one of the delusional episodes, but sometimes when we are playing with other households or jumping around, unfortunately, they will have an episode when I'm not there and then it becomes permanent so I just have to work with that but pretty much every trait she has right now she has rolled as a result of that unstable trait so nothing is an original trait from when she was a child or a teenager which is when I think she got the unstable trait or like anything she had as a baby it's a bit all over the place and Let's go now, actually the wing. So each of the fairies, they have like the different bloodlines, they have different wing colors because the daughters always inherit the wing colors of their mothers um, and the wing patterns. So for the royal bloodline, they have these white wings, which as you can see is on Queen Snow. And her appearance, so let's get a close up look at her because they all have sometimes well, fascinating colored eyes and such. So our fairy queen if you look at a crown it's not a normal crown they have candy crowns so a lot of the celebrations and things are based around the candy crown but her mother had the same crown back in her day except queen ivy our current dowager queen she had i think pink candies was it with blue metals like these cat ear metals um she had blue metal and with this queen, she has, I think, yellow candies with red swirls, but from a distance, they'll kind of blend and it makes it look orange. And then she has purple metal because her colors, they more follow in purples and pinks. And then I think she's got some like teal blue, something like that. So yeah, that's a lovely queen. And she has the, the royal blue hair. She's got these really pale eyes and she's got green skin now the previous monarch did not have green skin but the pale eyes and blue hair is one of like the two of the royal traits that we have you don't have to have them to be a royal but it's a good sign to show to others like i am a royal from the royal family and the royal bloodline because i have all of these obviously royal traits so there we go that is our lovely queen and before we head off let's take a really quick look at her family tree because it will help clarify a lot of things or characters to you guys um as a either a reminder or if you're new this will be helpful so as you can see queen snow has a ton of brothers so this is her mother dowager queen ivy burdington who with some of the ladies from the previous generation currently resides in the old burdington castle all the way across town so they live across dragon valley across the river and we're in a new location for snow's current palace so she was i think the second youngest out of seven children she has six brothers um and i think prince draco is younger than her but apart from that all these brothers are older so her mother had you know a very hard time having her 
For a long time, we thought we wouldn't get an heiress because she kept having boys and boys and boys, but eventually she managed to have Queen Snow, and Snow is an only child. So that's what we have for her. Now we shall move on to Lady Azalia Lakelin. So you can see Azalia has the same blue hair as Queen Snow, and um, that's because they're related, and I'll get into how in a second. But Azalea Lakeland, she is our minister. So in our series, ministers are the fairies that are supposed to be a bridge between the fairy population, the common people, and the nobles or the court. And they're in charge of all the holidays, organizing events, any parties that we have, anything that requires a lot of people, the minister is the one you go to. They're the ones who are kind of like the party people and they take care of take care of relationships in that way. Um, now her traits, she loves the outdoors, she's a party animal, so that definitely helps with her role. She's clumsy, she's good, and she's friendly. Now her wing, she has these turquoise wings, as you can see, which is part of the Lakeland bloodline. All these notifications, my goodness. And jumping into appearance, like I said, she has blue hair because she is actually the previous Dowager Queen's granddaughter. So she is Queen Snow's niece. Now all of the fairies you see now, they are born in the same generation, but their parents like might have been, so all their mothers are from generation one, but some of their fathers might have been like, you know, daughters of the generation one fairies. And it was weird. We had a lot of matches going on because in our series the fairies only mate with a male once so every time they mate to have a child with a try for a baby it is with a different male so even though they might have siblings some of these fairies they're all half siblings unless you're twins or triplets which i don't think we've ever had twins or triplets um they're not going to be full-blooded siblings so azalia's father is prince caspian and he is one of the older brothers of queen snow so that's kind of why we have this going on but if we get closer she's very ooh, oh my goodness i'm sorry <laughs> i made her invisible she's a beautiful fairy she has like these olive brown ish eyes um with that blue hair and turquoise turquoise wings that is her let's jump to the family tree so everything i said can make a lot more sense but okay so as you can see her mother was lady nessie lakeland who is now passed on of old age her father is prince caspian verdington who is the son of dowager queen ivy verdington so, grandmother, right over there. And then, her, she had an older sister by the name of Raven Lakeland, who was supposed to become the minister, but Raven died at the end of the previous season. So, Lady Azalea had to take on that role. But initially, she was, because she was the spare child, she was in line to become philosopher, because our philosopher didn't have any daughters. But that kind of, that kind of changed when Raven died. So that's what we have going on for these guys. Another thing I'm quickly going to explain is that in our series, we don't have any kings. We have queens um, only. Um, and so far, none of the queens have married. It's not forbidden to marry males in our series. They can marry males, the fairies, and they can also marry females. But the previous queen, Ivy, put in a rule that female fairies can only marry male fairies who are lords or princes, so they have to be descended from our original five fairies, um, which we have options for now in this generation. In the previous one, we didn't. Um, so marriages could definitely be a thing that happens if our fairies want that. Okay, that's pretty much it for her. And now we can jump to the next fairy, which is Lady Morida O'Reilly. So Lady Morida is our sorceress. She is in charge of creating potions and making sure that we have a magical arsenal of resources for the queen and our fae court to use for ourselves or against others who might stand against us. So that's what she's in charge of. She's also kind of the spy master, so she is going to eventually build up a network of magical minor pets that she's going to use as spies across the queendom in her mother's time it was birds i don't know if she might decide to use something a bit different but there we go now <clears throat> geez her traits where is the traits she is brave star quality has star quality um is perceptive a kleptomaniac and lucky and 
And let's see, her wings, she has these swirly dark pink wings. That is a sign of the O'Reilly sorceress bloodline. If we look further into appearance, she's got this really lovely like mauve colored hair and beautiful icy blue eyes, which I think she's the only fairy with blue eyes um, that I'm fairly sure she, she must have inherited from her grandfather or something, but regardless, looks beautiful. She's one of our really pretty fairies. Um, and then her family tree. So as you can see, she is the daughter of Lady Morrigan O'Reilly, our previous sorceress. Um, and she doesn't have any other family members of note. So typically we ignore the males unless they are princes or lords, something like that. And they have something to do in our story. Otherwise, these males... So in the first generation, a lot of the males that our females bred with were the original towny males of Dragon Valley. And because they've now died out, um, we're going to be arranging breedings more between the, the princes, the lords... Um, and then if we run under that, probably from the fairy population, the male population, fairies that I'll probably create, because otherwise you end up having pudding face and that's not fun. But all the lords and princes have really unique appearances because they went ahead and they, you know, they're, they're parents, they're parents, they're descended from the originals, so they have good kind of genetics and variation. And also, in case I haven't mentioned this before, <clears throat> Lady Celine over here was the only fairy born in the previous generation that I think I had before I got the random genetics mod, which blends the genetics of two sims and makes it so that their offspring look unique. So she was born before that, and then every other fairy I've had um, was born after I got that mod, so they might look more unique than Celine who pretty much looks like a carbon copy of her father. But, okay, that is Lady Morita summed up. And now we're going to head over to Celine. So Celine, Celine, Celine. She is our hero. So heroes in our series, they are in charge of protecting the queen. They're our defenders. They patrol. They run the more physical errands. They keep order in the queendom. Um, and I guess organize rescue missions if need be but anytime something physical happens they're always on the front lines making sure that they have everything under control and they are the most skilled when it comes to fitness and martial arts all those kind of things so that is her her traits let's see she is a loner she's dramatic night owl hot-headed and artistic so she does have a creative side to her even though she is all muscle she has these swirly dusty pink wings which are a sign of the orion bloodline and her appearance she has blonde hair she's got very dark brown almost blackish eyes almost blackish eyes as you can see and like i mentioned she is the only fairy we had born um before i got the random genetics mod so we had like the base game genetics when she was born and I didn't ever change her or randomize so we kept exactly the way she was and then the others had the random genetics so they look probably better like blend of their parents but there we go she honestly looks like a carbon copy of her father but she ended up quite lovely I will say quite lovely I know a lot of us absolutely adore her now family tree let's see so her mother was Lady, or is, Lady Nuala Orion. She's still alive. She's living at Verdington Castle with the Dowager Queen. Um, and her half-brother is Lord Odin over here. Now, Selene is also officially courting um, Prince Callum Verdington, who is the firstborn of the Dowager Queen. So Queen Snow's oldest brother. And Callum over here is our stable master, in a way. He lives at the Veddington Stables, which is a separate lot where we keep our royal magical horses, which the previous horses we had died. So, one, I need to lengthen the lifespan of pets if I can somehow, because they die too quickly. Our fairies live for eons and they don't. Um, and we need to get new magical horses, so that's going to be something on my list that I need to get done. But he stays there, looks after those horses, and if you have a good relationship with them, you can ride them without actually having horses on your lot. So, there we go. That's what we have going on with these guys. 
And the last fairy that we have is this one, Lady Saffron Fuentia, who is our philosopher. So she was not born in the previous season, she's new blood. Um, because our last philosopher did not manage to have a daughter, so we needed someone to fulfill that role, and Queen Snow appointed this new fairy. So I this was a sim I created. Well, Queen Snow appointed a new fairy, and Lady Saffron has joined the court as new blood, as a new philosopher. And so let's go through her traits. She loves to swim, she's rebellious, never nude, an animal lover, and a snob. And let's see, her wing, she's got these beautiful yellow wings, which is the first fairy to have these yellow wings. I think the previous philosopher had purple wings. Uh, and her appearance, she's got ginger hair, as you can see. Uh, and I think the previous philosopher had ginger hair too, so I just couldn't give that up, I really wanted it. Um, and she has lovely dusky skin, and also these yellow eyes. So, oh jeez, if you go too close, they become invisible. But she's got yellow eyes. So they're very interesting, very interesting, especially on dusky skin, but I like it. Makes her seem very magical. So she's my favorite fairy in this generation. Let me know who your favorite fairy is, guys. I'm curious. I'm very curious. But in the previous season, uh, Morita's mother, Morgan, was my favorite fairy. And in this generation, my favorite fairy is Lady Saffron. But okay, appearances, got that done. And her family tree, since she is new blood, she doesn't actually have any members on her family tree. She's completely new to this realm. Um, so for her background story, um, Lady Saffron was actually born in a noble family in some far-off kingdom, and as a teen, um, she was kind of prepped to be betrothed into some other noble house and just become a, you know, domestic fairy. And she really didn't want that, she was rebellious, so in the kingdom that she comes from, in a far distant land, essentially when you become teenagers, they arrange your marriage, and <clears throat> her marriage was arranged to someone else. It was just like a business exchange almost, but she, she really didn't want that, and she was rebellious, so she ran away from home, and she became a sailor at the high seas. And so she developed that loves to swim trait, and she spent quite a number of years developing her skills, her mind in particular, traveling to various lands and learning about them. Um, but now that she's, you know, a little bit older, she's still very young. She's the youngest in the court at this point. Um, they're all young adults, I think. They all are. Celine's the oldest, and she has 30 days before she becomes an adult, but everyone else is younger than her. Um, so now that she's no longer a teen, I should say, Lady Saffron actually wants to take all the knowledge that she has learnt in her later teen years, which in fairy years probably be a decent long time, um, and she wants to settle down somewhere. And when the offer came up to settle down in the royal fay court of Dragon Valley of the Verdington Queendom and Empire, she thought this was the right place to her because she is a snob, she is used to a life of privilege, and if she had to settle down somewhere, she definitely wants to maintain that lifestyle, but she doesn't want to go back home. She doesn't want to go back home and be forced into a marriage. That's just not for her. So that is Lady Saffron's story. And I'm going to pause because these sims are getting very hungry and whatnot. So I'll have to deal with all of that in a second. But now that we have introductions out of the way, we can take a look at our new palace. So this is... Verdington Palace, the second kind of royal residence that we'd that we've had in this series. We had Verdington Castle in season one, which is where the Dowager Queen currently lives with her old court. Um, but the new queen, Queen Snow, has decided to move somewhere else. So let me just take you in map view to show you where we had our old castle. So season one is entirely based here. Um, at this location, which is Verdington. Oh my goodness, my game is... There we go. It's taking a bit to load. But this is Verdington Castle, and Season 1 is based here. The story of Season 1 is based here. So I think we currently have probably the like three Sims and a butler living here currently. 
Um, and this was kind of like the ancient home of the Veddingtons for generations and generations. And it was all crumbling and Snow's mother, Queen Ivy, put everything back together and kind of grew the place, which is all great. Um, but Snow wanted something different. So she has instead decided to go all the way across Dragon Valley, across the river, as you can see. And she has made her palace right over here. Now, I have to say, I refuse to build in the Sims 3, so this, like, the structure of this palace, I did not make. It is something I got from the gallery, but, and I'll leave the creator in the description below so you guys can download it for yourselves, but I must say, it looks nothing like what it looks now. I did a ton of renovating to this place, so the palace you're going to get, the outside is going to look the same, but a ton of things are going to be very different to what we have going on here so i did i completely renovated the inside um this portion here the original build does not have i added the cars i added um this like the the martial arts dummies i added and then if we go to the back this portion in the original castle does not exist with the archer's gauntlet and these little things so hold on a second let me see if i can show you guys better Okay, so these portions at the back. So that little section you see right there with a staircase leading downstairs. And this section also, they don't exist in the original castle because I've gone ahead and added that. Now in the original palace, sorry, I'm switching between castle and palace, but it really is a palace. In the original palace, um, there is two floors to this building. So you have the ground floor, which is where we had our throne room. And then you have a second floor. But, in all honesty, you can't really use the second floor because, like here, this is first floor. If you go up a floor, the roofs, the way it's made, they're just so huge that you can't see the rooms, so you can't really use them. It's just non-functional. So, I just completely destroyed the second floor. It exists um, to hold up, like, the palace structure, but we don't play on the second floor at all. That's, like, off-limits. I have no staircases going up. We just have the ground floor and then we have the the basement level. So I had to add these basement levels because I needed a ton more rooms and there wasn't enough space on the ground floor. So that's what ended up happening. And then I completely renovated the inside and I built an underground level which doesn't exist in the original build. So there we go. That's all of the updates that I have. But, or a summary of the changes I made to the palace. So let's go through. Um, now contrary to the color scheme of the old palace which was blacks and we had bits of i think turquoise we had and like really bright fluorescent turquoise and then we had like hot pinks and we had blues we had those colors going on it's it's very different here in this palace we have more purple so purple is very dominant and then we've got pinks and we have greens with black accents so there is a bit of black here in there to accent things, but largely it's almost like spring colors. So there we go. And, and this I felt, so every color scheme we have for the palaces or the royal households, I try and make it what I feel to be the best representation of our fairies because I want the palace to represent all of them. And those darker colors worked well in the previous generation. For this generation, I feel as though these colors encompass the fairies we currently have. And it's almost like the palace is a combination of all our fairies. So, as you can see, this is the throne room. So as soon as you enter the palace, this is the main entrance. You have the throne room over here with the queen's seat and then the six chairs. And they have, there's like a platform over here um, with folding doors behind which there is actually another door that you can come out the back with. Although we don't really have anything back here, but you know, if you wanted, you could. So instead of a wall, I decided to use those kind of, what, what is this even called? I'm, words are failing me at this moment. What are they called? <laughs> okay, it doesn't want to help me out. Is this a, I don't even know what this is called. You get, you get what I mean, you got the screens. The screens, there we go, flipping hell, okay. I don't even know if that's proper terminology, but screens, okay? We have that. And let me just quickly put these walls up. So 
this this palace really is a blend of a whole bunch of things um it's like very nature springtime you know spring flower-esque feel but then it also has these asian almost influences so we have these like rounded doors um that look very pretty to me but okay so a lot of these doors that we have inside are these rounded ones and i just had to show you that but if we come to the right side this is our dining room which i love we have all these like flowers and then we have a mirror over here and really this space is just for dining and then we have a door over here that goes to our study this yeah this is the study so we have like a library with the bookshelves we've got some decorative flowers and we have this uh, like easel over here I've got a place to sit down now this spot with a book I actually have a mod that one of you lovelies recommended to me in the previous season where you can have the computer replaced with a book um, and a scroll so in the previous generation we used a scroll and this one I thought we'd use a book um, but I think this green book looks really cool. It's almost like, it's a fairy book, right? So it's like made from leaves rather than paper. And I think that's so cool, enchanted leaves, to have a, a book. But that serves as a computer. So as you can see, if we click on that, we can do everything we would do on a computer. And it just helps with the, the time we're living in. I like the immersion of it a lot more. So that's our study. And then this is our kitchen. So it is a very tiny kitchen but you know it is like smaller we have downscaled a little bit from what we had in the previous generation but i was getting a bit annoyed with all the levels and having to go up 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 and down well we didn't have really floors going down we didn't have any underground levels i think but going up like three four levels was a bit irritating so i tried to make everything a lot more basic depending on what we would need which really we don't need a bazillion fairies in here and we can just eat in the dining room so that 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 serves me just fine but we have everything we could possibly need in here. Um, as you can see, all of the amenities one could need in the kitchen. So there we go. Now, is anyone a cook? I don't know if anyone is inclined to cooking. I don't think so. We might just have to see the skills that they have to see who might be a cook. Oh, that's right. So I did randomize Lady Saffron's traits. So, not traits, I randomized her skills so she isn't someone who has like no skills because all of our other ladies, you know, because we played them in the previous generation, they have various skills. So, Lady Saffron does as well and let me just quickly go through them. So, she has level 2 in sculpting, level 1 in inventing, level 6 in athletic, level 5 in charisma. She has level 7 in cooking, so she might actually be a cook. Level 2 in riding, level 6 in gardening. Um, level 6 in handiness, level 4 in logic, level 8 in painting, she's a master mixologist, level 1 in base, 9 in social networking, she's a master writer which is perfect because the philosopher would have to write quite a bit, um, she's level 7 in alchemy, and she's a master martial artist, so I assume that comes from being a sailor, having to defend herself out in the high seas, that's really cool though, um, but okay, this is our kitchen, and this door leads to if we come out here oh geez what's happening okay i just right clicked accidentally if you come out this door it leads to this area where we have our archer's gauntlet and it leads down to the underground so our underground actually has two separate entrances that lead to two portions so you can't like if you come go down this section you can't access the section here you have to go down this entrance so it's like we have two underground sections that aren't connected to each other. So yeah, it's a little bit odd, but that's kind of what happened. Now, leading off the kitchen, we have our nursery. So I figured having the nursery really close to all the other places, like the common areas, would be good for the children. Like you'd have to run further um, less, especially, for example, if you have birthday parties. It's just really easy to bring them from the nursery down here. So we have all of the kids' toys, as you can see, and these really, really adorable vintage prams that we can use as bassinets or cribs. Um, and then we have this... This is what... Uh, I forget what this is called. But the little moon orb light thingamajiggy. What is it called? The moon dial. We have the moon dial over here um, because the fairies love 
anything to do with moonlight. And also, I have noticed when you put babies near this, sometimes they get this moodlet that they have, like they're getting moonlight and they really like it. So, there we go. And then we have a bathroom over here. So we have several bathrooms spread out throughout this palace and underground and they all have this exact same structure and color scheme. So there we go. We have our bathroom, convenient, it's in the nursery. So there's one on this end, there's one on the other side of the palace. Um, was there anything else on my mind in regards to the nursery? I don't think so. I don't think there was anything else in my mind for the nursery. Nope. Okay, so if we go along this side of the throne room, we have our... It's almost like a ballroom. This is like our ballroom, okay? So this is where all of our sims are going to be dancing when we have parties, and this is where you would have all of the, you know, sims chatting with each other. This is the socialite spot. So we've got two seats over here. We don't have a radio. We have this, um, jeez, half of these things I'm forgetting the names of, but that's why build mode or buy mode is great. So we have the diatrode crackler, um, more of a vintage radio, which works well for like our fantasy world and I like that. We have this base because of our sims, they're proficient and can play really well, including the queen. I think she's mastered it actually. And then we have a bar uh, that the sims can serve each other drinks off of and a mirror. Now the other exit to outside is through this door. So if we go through this door then you can go down the other part of the basement over there. Now the queen's chambers is back here so if you come into the ballroom through this door, which yes, it's glass, you can kind of see through, but it's locked. I haven't gone through and locked all the doors um, to the appropriate rooms. But through this, I thought a room right next to the throne would be great and just super convenient. So she actually, I think, has the most space out of everyone um, in everyone's rooms. So you come in here, you've got this lovely, lovely couch, and then you have beautiful mirror and it's a lot more vibrant so everyone's rooms they are more specific to their color scheme because everyone has their own color scheme um so there we go she has this lovely bed with some candles and then she has access to her own bathroom which i think everyone's rooms has their own bathroom it's just more convenient that way so that's what I had set up and I don't have a crazy amount of things in their rooms because just the basic necessities because really they only use their rooms to try for a baby and sleep. Um, there's other portions of the castle to serve various functions. So there we go. And then if you come back to the ballroom off to the other side, this is where we have our entertainment or games room. So you have your chess table, you have a dominoes table, which I think in the previous generation we had one outside and we barely used it because every time I remembered it would be winter. So this time around I thought we'd put it inside and I think this is really cool especially off of the ballroom because this whole left wing of the palace is where you would entertain. So this is supposed to be the right wing is more private. The left wing is like this is where you would entertain in parties and those kind of things. And the throne room. So, you know, you'd keep people in this general area. Um, and then off the entertainment slash games room, this is where you have another bathroom for the Sims to use. So there we go. They can go to the nursery or they can go there. I've got a bathroom in each wing. That works out well. And now let's go underground. So... This is the underground, quite sprawling. So we'll start on this side. So as you can see, it's not connected in the middle, so you actually have to go through the separate exits to um, get to them. But also, it doesn't matter too much because I think I've made the left wing for the sorceress and the minister, and the right wing is supposed to be for the hero and the philosopher. So everything they need um, in terms of their role will be in their respective wings, and they don't really have to go to the other side. So you really wouldn't see... Um, the philosopher and you wouldn't see the hero in the left wing but okay if you come down this staircase you go around to this end and this first room is actually supposed to be our butler's room so I don't know if I managed to arrange a butler like a butler at this point but I have to go get that sorted so we have someone who's using this area and I think the butler doesn't have its own private bathroom, but that, that's fine. That's fine with me. 
Um, but yes, I will be locking this room because one annoying thing that kept happening in the previous season is our fairies would always go use the butler's bathroom and I just made it so the butler doesn't have a bathroom this time. Um, but we have an extra public bathroom that hopefully they can use and share and whatnot. So there we go. And then if you keep going through the hallway here, kind of come this way and you come to this. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Hold on a second. I just see a wall. I just saw a wall that wasn't wallpapered. Ridiculous, I tell you. Ridiculous. Come on. Wallpaper. There we go. Okay. That was embarrassing. Well, now that all of that is done, the first room we come into straight through this entrance here is the Philosopher's Room. So this is Lady Saffron's Chambers. So it is in her color scheme. Um, so her kind of natural colors with the yellow eyes and the yellow wings and the ginger hair and then we have the purples and blues and blacks that she wears that's kind of like her theme colors uh, and then we have the bathroom which like I said before is the identical bathroom that we have throughout the entire palace um, and then if you continue down the hallway next to her chambers we have our like sculpting station and our inventing station so this is all in one room and this is supposed to be her workstation so this is where she would do all of her duties if she's not here she'll probably be up in the study because you know as a philosopher she'll be writing and then across from this area we have the heroes chambers so again this is all in her colors of yellow and cream and um, pink so that is Lady Celine's room, and then she has a bathroom, and pretty much all the bedrooms have this setup of like um, a chair, lamp, tables, dresser, and bed. It's got the exact same setup. Now another thing, some of these rooms, they're big enough to have like a tile on each side, so two sims can access the bed well. But then some of these rooms are a little bit smaller, so I think the hero and the sorceress has a smaller, not the, is it the sorceress? I think, yeah, the sorceress has a smaller room, so they have to have the bed up against the wall, and I'm relying on the fact that our sims can actually shuffle across the bed off to the other side. Um, if they can't, then we'll have to think of something else. Currently, I don't have a fairy house on the lot because in the previous generation, I got really annoyed by the fact that our sims kept using the fairy house even when I had like bedrooms assigned to them so I just got rid of the fairy house but at some point I don't know I, I might put it in I might like make a separate room underground or something um, with a fairy house well only give permissions to sims who don't have a bed assigned to them something like that um, but that is essentially this wing. If we go over to the left wing, so you come down this hallway, the first bedroom you come into is the minister's room. So it's got all of her colors of turquoise and um, cream, orange, light blue. Those are her colors. So we have her room here. And then if you continue down, and then she's got a bathroom, of course, continue down the hallway. This is where you have the sorceress, sorceress's room. So she's got all the like blacks, greens, grays, and some pink. This is her color scheme over here. And then next to this room, we have our alchemy station. So we have a bunch of these really cool pink pillars. Um, and this is where we would put our potions, stack up our potions. Um, and then we have a shelf, which in the previous generation we didn't, but just more space to put potions or resources. So we have our alchemy station, we have this cauldron, which I never really worked out in the previous generation, but we'll have it there nonetheless. If anything, it looks cool. And then we have a gem cutter. So previously we had a gem cutter like on a different part of the castle, on a different level, and it was just a bit messy, and I figured, you know what, half the times we, like half the times, what am I saying, half the time, we'll probably use the gem dust in potions so I would rather just have it next to the alchemy station so our sorceress can do that instead of the queen so there we go that's kind of the arrangement I have worked out thus far and so we come to a conclusion of our introduction to generation 2 of the fairy amazon series 
I am so sorry that went on for like 40 minutes, but there was a ton to get through, a ton to explain. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of the castle and you enjoyed getting a like reminder, a touch up on our ladies. Uh, let me know who your favorite fairy for this generation is. As I said, mine is Lady Saffron Fuentia. Um, and look, she's already got like level 2 renown, which is really cool. Hmm. And also let me know what your favorite room in the palace is. I'm unsure. I, like, I can't even answer that, so I don't know if you'll be able to. But then again, I have spent a lot more time putting the fairy palace together, like the insides, renovating a lot of it. And also, a lot of these rooms, um, I have like knocked down walls. Um, to make them the way they are so the original castle you download might be very different but anyways um yeah let me know what you guys think what you like i kind of like our games room a lot um and i love actually i think my favorite rooms oh, this is so difficult but i really like the games room and i really like the dining room mm, i'm torn i i don't know i'm torn but i think those two would have to be my favorite rooms mm. Okay guys, well with that said and done, I'm gonna leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.